Okay guys, uh, this is our third tutorial for Illustrator. This is going to be, what we're going to be working on here is uh, creating a version of Grover. Um, and so this will be our last Sesame Street character. And from looking at it, you can see it's probably a bit more advanced than the ones we've done. Because we've learned the pen tool, we're going to learn to do kind of some control um, kind of maneuvers and get, learn some control with this tool. So I'm going to get a new file here, and I'm going to give you this file or show you how to get this file, but we're going to be working on this graphic right here, okay? And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lock the layer that this is on so we're not moving it around. So I'm going to go to, first let's reset our workspace. So I'm going to go Essentials, Reset Essentials. Okay, once you've done that, then you're going to go to Layers, which is up here, and we're going to, what's that? Uh, I'm going to create a new layer okay, down here. Okay, you'll see this little new page icon. I'm going to click that, and it's going to create a second layer. Now, I want to lock this layer one so that I don't uh, move anything. I'm just going to click here, and that locks the layer. And what that means is I can't move this layer. Okay, if I go to my Move tool and I click here and I go to move it, I can't do anything. Okay, and now I'm going to go back up to layer layer two, and that's where I'm going to work. So the first few steps I think you guys should be able to do on your own. Okay, we're going to be creating the nodes, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roughly estimate the size uh, that I want here. A couple of things I want to show you. If while I'm doing this, um, I want to move where it's, see how it's kind of off by a little bit. I actually did pretty well there. That's pretty close. But say I was off and I wanted to move what's called the registration point, which means the starting point. If I hit the space bar while I'm still, um, I haven't let go of my mouse yet, I hit the space bar, I can reposition where this is starting from and get the right, right size kind of exactly. Okay, uh, so there's our first, and then if, I, if I'm wrong, I can just readjust that. There's our first move. I'm going to drag this out of the way just so I can pick up the color. So I'm going to go to my eyedropper tool, which is here, and I'm going to click on this pink. I'm going to get my next circle, which is going to be right here. Again, spacebar to reposition it and get roughly the right size. And I'm going to move this over here, and I'm going to go to my eyedropper tool and select this. And this is going to give me the correct pink. I may need to reposition this a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to do the last bit, and we're going to use the um, Pathfinder tool, or actually I'm going to teach you guys the Shape Builder tool. So let's take a look at this tool. If I make one shape and I make another shape, and you'll recognize this is going to look similar in some ways to the Pathfinder tool. Uh, it's just a little easier to work with. So say I've got these two shapes here, and I go to this right here, the Shape Builder tool. Okay. If I click and drag through these, it's going to do what the um, Pathfinder Unite does. So if I do that, it turns them. Oops, I got to have it selected. Have them selected. Okay. And if I drag through them, it's going to turn them into one shape. I'm going to undo that. Command Z. If I want to only keep one part, I just click here and ignore the. Oh, sorry. Uh, click Option and click here, and it's going to subtract those two. Okay, so that was the option key. You can see it's changing from plus to minus. So I can just subtract away the parts that I don't want by holding option. So if I've got a really complicated um, shape, um, say it's a number of overlapping shapes like this, and I want that inside part, I can just select them all, go to my Shape Builder tool, hold Shift, and click through. You don't even have to hold shift. Just click through them, okay, and it's going to make that shape, okay, by connecting them. Okay, I can also, if I wanted to, let me undo that. So we'll, we'll try that, but uh, you can just drag through and draw. As this line draws, it connects the shapes that you are um, saying that you want to keep. And if I want to get rid of something, I go to the Shape Builder tool again, and go Option or Alt, and just click away the ones I don't. Okay, so I'm going to use that tool, and that's similar to the Pathfinder tool. It's kind of doing the same thing. And I'm going to make that kind of highlight there by using two circles. So I'm going to go to my ellipse tool and draw a circle that is around the same as this curve, that inside curve. And then I'm going to make another one which is about the same as this curve here, right there. Okay, and then I'm going to move both of them. So maybe I'll, I'll click on both. So click one, shift click 2 and I'm going to move them over here. Now I only want this part. So I'm going to go to my Shape Builder tool, which is there, and I'm going to hold Option and I'm going to drag away that, drag away that, and drag away that. And it just leaves me with this one shape here. Okay? 
I'm going to click that, and I'm going to go to my eyedropper tool, pick up the color. Um, and now it's a little sharp there, so what I might do is zoom in. Right, and there's a you don't need to do this, but there's a couple ways to do this. I could put like a little circle like there, um, and then use my shape builder tool again to subtract the part that I oops have most selected. And I think this would have to line up exactly for this to work. Let's see. Shape builder tool, where'd you go there? Okay, so I'm gonna. Oh, it's not, it's not quite lining up. You can see when I click this, it's it wants to get rid of the whole thing. So it looks like I'm I'm missing. Yeah, see that right there? I'm going to just see if I can get this to line up a little better than I did. There's got to be a better way to do this. I'll, I'll figure out a better way to do this. But for now, um, I'm just going to zoom in here, and I'm going to Shape Builder away this part option. Click that, and then I'm going to add these together. So there's one. And I'm not even going to bother because that doesn't look as good as I wanted it to. I'll figure out a better way to do that for a class. Um, and then I'm going to place this around here. Right, and there's our, our highlight. That looks fine for what we're doing. Okay, I'm now going to group these together. So I'm going to select them. You notice I drag over these three, but not. Um, I don't have to go over the whole thing. I just click over these three, and I say right-click, group. And now those are going to be grouped together. So when I move one, I move all. Okay, let's do the eyes. Those look pretty straightforward. So I'm going to start off with uh, an oval around that big. And just to see what I'm doing, it's a little hard. If I did this, it's difficult to, to tell exactly what I'm doing. So I'm going to flip it so that I have a, a stroke but not a fill. And that just means it's easier for me to kind of get the sizing right. So I'm going to rotate that and I can sort of see what I'm doing. Because if it's too big or, uh, and I can't see behind it, I can't see if this was a fill, I wouldn't know exactly where I've got to get to and I've got to kind of play with it and keep guessing, whereas if I change it to a stroke, I can see a little more clearly what size I need to get. Okay, it looks like I need to get a little bigger here, and that should be close enough for what we're doing here. Okay, I'm going to click this guy here, which will set them back to black and white, and I'm going to, you'll notice it's got a black stroke on it. I don't want a black stroke, so I'm going to just go here and turn off my stroke. Okay, there's my eye, and now I just need a circle. Uh, around this size. I'm going to start in the middle and notice that it drags down and to the right. Well, if I hold Option on my keyboard, it actually starts in the center. Okay, I'm still holding Option and I'm going to hold the space bar as well and then I can really reposition that and get it exactly where I want it. Okay, and that's about right there. I need that to be black, not white, so I'm just going to pick up the black color and then I'm going to drag it over to my eye. Now that eye is a little hard to see I'm going to do this so you can see where it is. Reposition this part of his eye, and maybe that's around there. You can use your arrow keys on your keyboard if you want to move it like really one pixel at a time. And then I'm going to right click and group these together so that when I move that eye, it all comes as one element. Okay, I need a copy of this eye. I'm going to make the second one. So while I have it selected, I'm going to hold Option on my keyboard and drag it over here. I'm going to hold Shift so that it stays in the same line. Let me move this over so you can see what we've got here. Okay. Now this one has to be the opposite. It's got to be like the pupil has got to be on, on the inside. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go Object, Transform, Reflect. And it's going to give me this dialog box. And it shows me what, I, what I'm looking at. I want a vertical reflection. So from here to here. And if you preview, it'll show you exactly what it, it's doing. Okay. So I want it like that. Once I'm happy with that, I say OK. And there's my eyes. Right, so I'm going to bring this nose out to the front. Uh, arrange, bring to front. Okay, so we're looking like we're in pretty good shape here. Here's the harder part of this. I've got to now make this here, this sort of top half of Grover's head. The tricky part about doing that is you've got to approach it in the right way. So I want you to think about a drawing like this in the same way you would think about it if you were drawing or if you were creating it out of like cardboard paper. So if I gave you a stack of colored cardboard paper and I said make it a piece, you know, an elmo that looks like this, you might cut out a white circle and then cut out a black circle. And that's kind of what this is here, right? That's, if I break this apart here, okay, that's kind of like a black circle placed on top of a white circle. And then this is a pink um, sort of cutout on top of a different pink color cutout on top of a different pink cutout. So this is, again, three pink colors cut out of cardboard. 
okay? So what we're going to do is try and think about these shapes, even if they're complicated shapes like this, in the same way we would think about cardboard uh, paper, uh, colored paper. So we're going to try and create just the top half, just this part here, okay? And we're going to start with the piece that's in the back. So if you imagine that this dark blue is one piece of paper that's this shape here, okay? And let me show you. I've already done this over here, so I'm going to break this apart and show you what I mean. There. So this is actually just sitting behind the light blue, okay? And what that means is I don't have to worry about um, the connection between these. I just have a big piece of blue hidden behind this next piece. And when I put it in front, and, and we'll have to draw this, but essentially this is doing the kind of double duty here, right? And so you can actually see how I've built this thing. I've got a black circle in front of a red circle in front of all these other shapes, right? And each shape is just obscuring or hiding the shape behind it to make up my graphic, okay? So let's look at how we would do that. Now we've learned how to use the pen tool. We're going to need some practice, but the pen tool is a great tool for doing this kind of work. So I'm going to start, it doesn't matter where you start, but I'm going to start here, and I'm going to do just the blue outline, okay? So starting here, and you guys are going to probably have to practice to get uh, good at this tool, okay? Because it's a pretty top powerful tool. But you'll notice that every time I just create a curve, okay, and it doesn't have to be exactly the same curve as um, Elmo. If, if the hair is off by a little bit, it's not gonna, no one's gonna look at your cartoon of Elmo and go, that's not exactly the same as the one on the internet. So don't worry about it being exact. But you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of getting roughly the right shapes, okay, and you guys. The clicking of this is going to take a little bit of practice, okay? As I, I've been doing this for a long time, so I can get pretty accurate pretty quickly. You guys are going to have to practice with it. But one of the things you'll notice is as I do this, I'm starting to obscure or hide part of what I need to see. Um, you may want to work like this, or you may want to use an outline the way that I did with that pink, uh, the, sorry, the uh, eye. When I created the eye, I didn't use a fill. I used a stroke um, and made it easier to see. But that's all there is to this piece, and now I'm just going to say, turn it to blue. And that's going to be hidden around the back, so I'll arrange, send to back. Okay, so there's my, uh, my Grover outline, and now I just need to do the next piece, which is going to be the inside blue, this like lighter blue. I'll do this one uh, last. I'm going to now take kind of all this bit, so I'm going to go to my pen tool. Again, I'm going to start maybe here, okay, and... As I do it, I'm just going to follow the shapes, okay, until I end up kind of with the shape that I need. Okay, now I'm just going to keep on going through this until I'm done, and you can see that sort of process. And now you guys are going to have to do this probably a little slower than I am. That's okay. And you may make a couple mistakes here and there. That's okay. Mistakes are all part of learning. And as and the way I got good at doing this was by making lots of mistakes. So try and practice. And you, remember, you can't really break this. It's just a process of learning and practicing until you get comfortable with it. Okay, so there's my next shape. Take this guy and put it right there, go to the eyedropper tool, pick up this color here, okay, I'm going to do it this blue, okay, no, I'll do it this for now, I'm going to pick up that color there, and I'm going to send that arrange, send backwards, actually I'm going to send it to the back, arrange, send to back, and then I'm going to take this one, the blue one, and send that further back, arrange, send to back, okay, so there's our are sort of two pieces. Okay, so you're going to go through and continue this. Um, it's going to take a while and you're going to have some questions as you go, but when you're done you should end up with uh, a piece like this. And what I'll do here is I'll just break up apart all the pieces so you have a sense of all the things that you're doing. Um, so you can, actually you know what I'll do is I will do this. I'm going to make a copy of it. Okay, and then what you can do is if you look at all the elements that were used to make this, you can at least get a sense of how this was created. 
there. And then I'm going to move this and this and this down here. Okay, so you can see how that was done. And I'll break that apart so you can see all the elements here. Okay, and then again here, let's move this number out of the way and move, move all this up here. And I'm going to separate this out so you can see kind of how this whole thing was built. Okay, and hopefully that is a, a useful tutorial for people to get a sense of how to create a, an object like this. Okay, give that a shot and uh, take your time, work slowly through this process, and ask questions if you're not sure. Good luck.